is to talk about community and not let community talk for themselves. One of the things that we tend to do is refer to our community in third person and second person. We might as well say these people. We might as well say it. You know, one way you know that hope has died in Los Angeles is that there are 10 times as many homeless people in Los Angeles now as there was in 1992. Woo! Los Angeles is the homeless capital of the world. Every night in Los Angeles, 81,000 people go to sleep on the streets. Los Angeles has more people living under the poverty line, 790,000 people, than the entire city of San Francisco. That's the population of the entire city of San Francisco. When we talk about homelessness in Los Angeles, we don't know that we're on the bubble of a homeless explosion. When you have nearly 400,000 people in the county of Los Angeles who are about to lose their home in the next year, where are those people going to go? To the streets. But we act like we don't see that. And we say we have hope that they will find a place. Okay? And so, a person who was part of the riots who has a first-hand account of what happened downtown and has a 20-year observation as to how Los Angeles treats homeless people. One of the leading voices for the homeless in the city of Los Angeles, Mr. General Jeff. Good morning. Happy to be here. Thank you, Dr. Salam, for that uh, wonderful introduction. Um, you know, after this such an esteemed panel, a lot of people are looking like, well, who is that? Who is that? You know who they are. What's going on? The other is kind of leading like seesaw. And, and this, that's fine. No, no hard feelings. But I want to introduce myself. My name is General Jeff. I'm a proud Skid Row resident. I live in Skid Row. I'm not an addict. I've never been in a drug program. I'm a strong black man and I refuse to accept the homeless. We live in Skid Row as a sign of weakness. That's part of my introduction, all right? We, let, let's put the seatbelt on because we better go for a ride. If we want to have that talk, let's have that talk. Y'all ready to have that talk? Yeah. I live in Skid Row right now. And we all know about homelessness. And what Dr. Samar was saying, the statistics, that's why LA County. You know, not LA City, the all of down Los Angeles County. And so, when I'm in City Hall, when I'm in the community, when I'm walking these streets, when I'm walking and talking and trying to build hope and build the, the, the dreams and the confidence and boost the self-esteem of our community, everybody's talking about, but did you hear what they said about us? And it's like, just like my sister right here, Sister Jefferson was talking about, at some point in time, we got to stop listening to all that fluff that they trying to make up about us. I, you know, I don't accept none of what they're talking about. Yeah, I live in Skid Row, but understand, just like there are homeless folks that live in Skid Row, they're also rent-paying residents. Even though they stay in the SR home and it's low income, they pay their rent every month on the first, just like everybody else. Okay, so let's get a homeless list. I don't even like the word homeless. That makes it seem like everything else in a person's life is okay. They just don't have home. Just give them a home and they'll be fine. No, that's, that's far from the people. There are more other issues than that. But let me just keep on going because you're saying, okay, what does that have to do with what we talk about today? I'm glad you asked. I was born and raised in South Central Los Angeles. I went to Crenshaw High School, you know what I mean? And so, um, I care about my city. I was born here. Matter of fact, my mama still lives in the house that I was born in. You know, so I got my roots blended here. I care deeply about my city. You know, after I graduated from high school, I got to the rap game. I'm first generation West Coast hip hop. They called me a pioneer for the for the trip, the blade, the, the trails that we blazed. You know, I, I, I take homage to that and I appreciate all of that. But at the same time, 
when hip hop was going on, we were proudly representing South Central Los Angeles. You know, our voice was on those rap records, we put South Central Los Angeles on the map. You know, we were proud of it. it, it you know, it may not have been the greatest community, but we were proud of it, just like in, in, in Skid Row. You know, it may not be the greatest, as a matter of fact, it's far from it. On the total pole of life, Skid Row is on the bottom. But you know what? We're not trying to change that name. We're trying to take that negative energy and convert it into positive energy, and let's grow with it. Why? Because we have international appeal. So we know that if we don't have the resources in our community ourselves, we got to reach out and connect with the rest of the world. So as far as changing the name, the world only knows us as Skid Row. Why would we change that name? And so it's the same thing. When I, before I started my community activism in Skid Row, I was trying to get my community activism on in South Central Los Angeles. It didn't work because of the gang situation. I couldn't get brothers to sit at the table together because it happened. Don't bring no guns, man. I know they ain't got guns. Look, I'm going to bring my gun again. Well, I don't want to sit at the table with them. It was, just, it was just confusion. So I said, you know what? It, it, it's not time yet. So, you know, Brother Noel Taylor, that Sister Connie Rice was speaking about, I commend those brothers. And, you know, they really, you know, Jim Brown, the mayor I can, they roll up their sleeves and went in there. And, 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 you know, it's still a lot of work to, to do. Still a lot of work to be done, but they make it progress. You know, something else about me, you know, when I, I you know, Brother Rodney King, man, I, 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 I'm proud of you, brother. You know, I'm amazed. It's like a lot of people don't know. You know, and, and I no disrespect, but I have to use his brother's name as an action verb because I got Rodney King years before Rodney King got Rodney King. But of course, I, you know, I sued, you know, I won. It wasn't, you know, oh, yeah, I, I got the bare minimum. Because it, it wasn't a jury of my peers, if you will. You know. Anyway, but when I look at that videotape, and I, it, 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 it instantly, when that happened to Brother King, that brought back so many memories, you know, so much anger and emotion out of me, you know, and I was ready for action. So, um, of course, we were, you know, oh, 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 we got the video footage. I didn't have the video footage. That brother got the video footage. There it is, the smoking gun. What can they say now? We got it. And sure enough, we wait for the judicial process, yada, yada, yada. Come on, let's, let's go. That day, they announced that verdict. And I was, oh my God, are you serious? And I knew my, and at that time I was in the entertainment industry, so I wasn't even in town. As soon as I heard that, I was, yeah, how, what, what, what happened? Oh, I got the first play, I gotta get back to LA. Oh my God, here we go. And I was breaking my neck. And, 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 you know, the airports would say everything was shut down. I literally got stuck in the valley. Uh, by the time I got to the valley, they called the National Guard in. And I'm still like in curfew, and I'm trying to duck and dodge these tanks rolling down the street, and all these folks with these big guns. I'm getting back to the hood. I don't, my mama there, my family, all y'all tripping. Curfew my, curfew for my butt. I'm getting back to the hood. I'm tripping it, and so I didn't get there. <laughs> I'm it. I didn't have you know no weapons, but you know one of the concerns was um, just like. Uh, you know, when they talk about the burnings of the buildings and things, I know there's like a Western surplus over on the West, uh, Western of Manchester. I don't know if you remember that. And I didn't, they, they, you talk about places get looted, of all places get looted where they got guns and ammunition. And I'm thinking, oh boy, this is, this can get ugly real quick. E you know, either those folks are going to start shooting at the National Guard the police, or they can start shooting at other black folks. And I'm running around these streets with no weapons, trying to get home to protect my family. And, and, and who knows, this thing could escalate to a whole nother level. And so, you know, Brother King, you know, with all that tension that's going on in the community, Brother King got him down the National Spotlight. And all, all eyes and ears was looking at that brother. And that brother said, can we all get along? I just want to say, you know, can we can we all get along? Can we can we get along? Um, can we stop making it making it horrible for for the for the older people and the, and, the, and the and the kids? It was like that. That was so. That was the most. That was the turning point. Otherwise, I think because if that brother would have said, let's burn. 
this city town. Do you know So, uh, something that uh, Sister Connie Rice mentioned has through my community activism in, in Skid Row. You know, and, and like I said, I got Rodney King before Rodney King got Rodney King. And so, as a community activist, I too had to you know, get over that unease as far as having to talk to the police now. I, I'm really not trying to talk, I understand what your position is. But at some point in time, somebody's got to initiate that dialogue. And if they're not trying to talk to us at some point in time, you know, I don't have enough guns and ammo. We don't have enough guns and ammo. We don't even have that, that mindset. To me, I think black folks is, 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 is understanding by nature. We got a not a lot of love in our hearts. As a people, you know, this society has turned us angry. Why are we so angry? We got a whole lot of love to give. Because in this room right now, it's nothing but love. And so, you know, Sister Rice is right, you know, we got to start talking to these folks so that they understand our perspective. You know, just like Hype and him, you know, we have started dialogue. It's like, I didn't know until like maybe five, ten years ago, I never even heard of Korean barbecue. I never even heard of it. I thought black folks were the only ones that had barbecue. And so, <laughs> and it's good too, you know what I mean? And so, but that's what I'm talking about, the differences in cultures and things of that sort. So, there's a lot of dialogue that needs to happen. I appreciate y'all being patient with us. There's a lot of speakers up here. We're going to get to some Q&A. But, you know, when I talk about, I mentioned earlier about the name change, because I feel like at this point in time, you know, over 20 years later, the, 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 the storm has calmed down. We really need to revisit the idea of, of taking our name back to South Central. Because that's, people know us all over the world in South Central. And right now, in other countries, they don't identify with South LA. I don't even know where, what the boundaries are where South LA is. You know, the, 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 the boundaries have changed, the demographics have changed, and therefore there's no sense of urgency in South LA. Now, if this was South Central LA, oh, there's a whole bunch of urgency, a sense of urgency, just like in Skid Row. We're not changing our name because we need that sense of urgency. We need to keep that lie lit, the fire lit under the feet of these, these folks. Um, one, you know, one last thing quickly. When we talk about reparations as a possible solution, you know, and, and, and from what I understand, that we were, our, our four, African forefathers and foremothers were sold into slavery. And so that sounds like any time they're sold, it's a buyer and a seller. So we look at the white folks because they have to pay us, you know, for their obligation. I think it's time we got to look at the continent of Africa and saying, y'all got to kick in too. And so then when I'm looking at it like this, what's we get this kick in? Then we can come back to America and say, y'all match what they kick in. So if we get a trillion dollars from the continent of Africa, then we come back to the United States and say, y'all match that, we can call it even. I'm good. All right. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Now, what were your feelings last week? I know this is kind of an obvious question. What were your feelings last week when you saw what was happening to the city? I hate to say I told you so, but I told you so. so I, was feeling, I was feeling beautiful to see all the unity. But then again, I was feeling nervous because I know that America's not going to let um, the riots go along, and I was worried that we were going to lose a lot of people. Now, a lot of people saying, though, that Hollywood is one of the worst one of the most guilty uh, people or places when it comes to putting up the wrong image. True, but Hollywood is just giving America what America wants. So if we start with America, then Hollywood won't be doing it. Just like now, how we have all these black movies. Because America, part of black America, part of America is black. And we tell them this is what we want to do. So we get it. But if all America says, you know, well, we don't want no more of that, you know, black or white, and black or Mexican, and none of that. We want peace.